his last train that goes up there before the colour oh, really? track. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. So he's kind of waving to people. It's sort of like waving goodbye. Yeah. He won't be able to say train because he's been there. Oh, OK. Um, but then we were supposed to come down and wait for an hour at the bottom of there. Mm. Um, but instead, we waited at the bottom of the branch and then just came straight through. So we kind of used up all the hour, but that meant we were back on train again. Oh, OK. And then we were a little bit late coming back towards Cardiff. And yeah. Then they pulled us back, and by the time we got back to Burton, we were absolutely bob on. Oh, wow. Yeah. It was a long day. It left at ten past seven and got back at eleven thirty-five. <laughs> Ouch! <laughs> so it wasn't hard work in any way, but it was yeah. long. Yeah. long. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but um, we had a nice time. Did. Yeah, that's the important bit, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Great time with Nigel Capricious. Incredibly, yeah. yeah. In the first Amazing. class, and then old. Oh wow! Well, sort of nineteen seventies characters. Oh cool. Much after mm. the live with them, so oh amazing. amazing. Sounds great. We got to Bridge End, and I think the people that walked out around Bridge End mm -hmm. have probably worked out why it might have been the suicide capital of Britain in a few yeah. years ago. Because uh, we stayed yeah. on the station. <laughs> it's uh, it's yeah. not the nicest no. Bridge End now, no. is it? <laughs> <laughs> it's a bit of Wales to us, Lee, that you avoid. <laughs> yeah, it's more like World's End, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> definitely. Right, I'm going to very quickly rather get some more like uh, another drink yeah. and then I'll be back. Welcome to St Auckland's, this um, sunny spring day that also happens to be Mother's Day. Um, we'll be uh, talking a little bit more about mothers a little bit later on in the service. But welcome uh, to the family, welcome to joining us online and at home. We're going to be starting something that we will be lighting each week. Um, as a reminder that there is so much um, war and oppression going on in the world that we really need to pray for God's peace. So Chris, um, Chris Thorne, where are you? Chris, lovely. She's just going to come up. Um, and Chris, the microphone's just there. Um, and Chris will be leading us in a peace prayer this morning. And one of the Lynx team will be doing that each second Sunday. So Chris, please do. So we're just doing this lighting a candle uh, just for peace, really, in our land and in the world. So let us, let us pray. God of peace and justice, we pray for the people of Ukraine, for those in Gaza, including the hostages, for those in Sudan and other parts of the world today. We pray for peace and the laying down of weapons. 
We pray for all those who fear for tomorrow, that your spirit of comfort would draw near to them. We pray for those with power over war or peace, for wisdom, discernment, and compassion to guide their decisions. Above all, we pray for all your precious children at risk and in fear, that you would hold and protect them. We pray in the name of Jesus, the Prince of Peace. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Chris. And over to the worship team who will lead us in worship. Good morning. Would you like to stand, if you're able, as we worship together?
welcome God in this place and we welcome everybody into this place. It's uh, considerably filled up a little bit more from the first welcome, so welcome everybody. If you are a small person, if you are under 11, there are Lighthouse Kids Group and if you're over 11, there are the youth groups. Um, hopefully somebody will guide you that way if you are not aware of which group your, your younger person should be joining. Um, and so we pray for them as they go. Heavenly Father, we pray your blessing and your anointing upon each and every child. We thank you for the joy and the life that they bring to this church family and pray, Father, that you would bless them in their groups, that you would minister to them, that you would speak to them, and Lord, that you would anoint the leaders as they lead them in the ways of Christ. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So as the children are going to go out, we're going to be praying uh, just um, a brief prayer on this Mother's Day. We thank you, Lord, for all mothers, the good ones and the bad ones, the ones who aren't perfect, the ones we never knew and the ones who we miss. We pray today for all carers, mothers, fathers, godmothers and fathers, aunts and uncles, grandparents, but also we pray for those who hold no official worldly titles, but who show us God's caring love. We pray today for those celebrating the gift of parenthood. We pray also for those who had difficulties becoming mothers and fathers, but who are now. We celebrate with them. We also pray for those who are not mothers and fathers and would love to be or would have loved to be. We especially pray today for those who find today hard or lonely or painful for whatever reason. We pray that they would know your precious, caring, comforting love today and always. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Great. Let's worship the Lord together. In the darkness we were waiting, without hope, without light. Till from heaven you came running, there was mercy in your eyes. To fulfill the law and prophets, to a virgin came the word. From a throne of endless glory, to a cradle in the dirt.
flood this place through the atmosphere. New glory, God is what our hearts long for to be.
is what our hearts long for to be overcome by your presence no Good morning. Am I? Excellent. I'm up. Good morning, everyone. Um, please remain standing. Sorry. We're um, messing with the timings of the service already, and we're only 25 minutes in. Um, but it feels like what God's asking me to do this morning. So um, apologies to the children's groups in advance if we're now running significantly over, and if everybody's already got lunch plans and stuff like that. Um, we're doing a series on wilderness, and that might be heavy for a lot of us. And this is a Sunday that also carries a lot of emotion with it as well. Um, on a lot of Sundays, we also have a confession slot where we bring before God all those things for which we want to say sorry for. And this isn't that. This, I think, is a space for us to bring our pain, to bring our burdens, to bring the things where we want to ask God's help, we want to ask God's healing in situations. And there may be some of us here who feel weary, who feel laid down, who feel like they've been trudging through a wilderness for 40 years um, and they still can't see the promised land. And I just want to give us a space to bring that before God now. Our prayer ministry team will be available at the back if you would like somebody to pray with you. Um, the prayer ministry team will also be available after the sermon um, if that triggers anything you'd like prayer for as well. But this is something different that I just feel God wants us to make space for now. Um, and so I'm going to ask our worship band to play that song again. Um, if that's okay, please. Um, and honestly, we're going to give this as much time as it feel like God wants us to. Um, so feel free to freestyle it once we get to the end of this song if it feels like the spirit is moving amongst us and we're in that we're in that place. Um, equally, if we get to the end of this song and it feels like that's been enough space for us, then we will carry on with the rest of the service. Um, but it felt like God was telling me to stop and to make space for this. Um, so we're going to sing in worship and we're going to make space for that time to meet with God to bring before him those burdens, to bring before him that sense of wilderness, to bring before him any pain that's in our lives. If, we want, if you want to meet with God this morning, if you would like healing in your life for whatever it is, then please, um, there are people that would love to pray for you. Our prayer team will be at the back. Please um, um, pray for your neighbor if they are comfortable with you doing that as well. Um, but if you would like prayer from our prayer ministry team, they will be available at the back of church and we would love to pray with you. Um, this morning. Um, if we have three words um, that we had this morning as well um, that seem to feed into this. Um, Jesus said to me, come to, said, come to me all you who are heavy laden and I will give you rest. My yoke is easy and my burden is light. And there was also a picture of spring flowers and leaves growing up and then a bud and finally the bud opens. Um, and that, that was a reminder for someone that God, of God's hope in all situations and that answers to prayer may be gradual um, but they are there and finally someone who's always struggled with mothering Sunday because they felt that they were a disappointment um, that they were a girl and not a boy and just a message that God says you are never a disappointment to me um, so if any of those words speak to you or if there is anything else you would like prayer for um, this morning please do receive it um, and take this time to meet with God as well. But we're going to sing together now. There's nothing worth more. No level 
never come close You think can compare your living hope Your presence I've tasted and seen the sweetest of love And my heart becomes free And my shame is undone Your presence, Lord Sing again There's nothing worth more You will ever come close Nothing can compare your our living love, your presence. I've tasted and seen the sweetest of love when my heart becomes free. And my shame is undone Your presence, Lord Holy Spirit, you are welcome here Come flood this place to the
Continue to receive prayer if you are receiving it. Um, Roland also had a word for us this morning that um, we've lit a candle of peace and many of us here may be feeling, God, where are you? Um, and he wants to offer us that chance this morning to meet with him, to say, here I am. Um, and so if that's you, um, if that's all of us, um, let's take that opportunity this morning to meet with God. Um, and if you have any other words or pictures that you would like to share, please come and bring them to Faye or I um, at the front. Um, and it would be great to share them with the whole church family um, as well. But please continue to receive prayer um, if you would like to. We're going to continue in prayer now um, with our intercessions, um, which Chris is going to bring to us. Our prayers for today will reflect that today is Mother's Day, as we've mentioned, and we've also just had International Women's Day, and Ramadan, the month of fasting for Muslims, starts in the next couple of days. So let's come to the Lord in prayer now. Father God, we thank you today for our mothers and for anyone who's had a motherly role in our lives. Thank you for their self-giving, and may those of us who have mothers who are still alive, may we find ways of honoring them today. And many of us learn to follow Jesus from the example of our mothers. And Lord, we give thanks for those mothers who taught us to trust you. And we give thanks too for the many mothers here in our church family, especially those juggling <clears throat> the families and home responsibilities alongside their professional jobs. Help them to give their best and to care and support their children and also to help them to understand about following you. And for many reasons also, as we've mentioned, this can be a difficult day for many people. A day of loss, disappointment, history of messy, difficult relationships. So maybe in the quiet now, we could bring before the Lord anyone we know who is particularly struggling today. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we continue to pray for the conflict areas of our world, especially <clears throat> between Ukraine and Russia, Gaza and Israel, North and South Sudan. Father God, we pray for an end to these conflicts and violence and pray once more for lasting peace. And we know that war causes families to be separated. And so today we think of the many Ukrainian mothers who came to UK and other European countries with their children leaving husbands and fathers behind. Strengthen those mothers as they help their children not to forget their families, their fathers, and help them to try to hold a family together in a new country where they're all traumatized in one degree or another. <clears throat> and this week as well, we had the tragic news of the abduction of children in Nigeria straight from school 
and think of those families this weekend as they suffer the loss of those children and pray, Lord God, that the government will step in and that those children will be quickly reunited with their families. And for those in YWAM who were recently devastated by that awful accident in Tanzania, we pray for the bereaved family members of those who died from whatever country. And while we can't begin to understand why this should happen, we affirm our confidence that you are God and that you, and you will be glorified. God of all comfort, draw near, draw close to each person impacted by the accident, and especially for the YWAM leadership shaken by all that has happened. We thank you for the work of Amani in Kenya, <clears throat> with many of their projects based on mothers and girls, particularly for the widows. We pray for the groups of widows who are being supported to learn new skills so that they can become self-sufficient and provide themselves for their families. Lord, we pray that while they're involved with this project, they will learn just how much you love them and grow in their self-confidence to face the future not necessarily tied to the charity any longer, but confident of skills that they've gained. And as they gain these skills, that, Lord, we pray they too can be discipled in following you. And we pray the same for the girls who are supported with the Sanitary Wear Project, that they too will be able to improve their school attendance and so learn their value in your sight and how they can keep themselves safe in the future. We thank you for John Preswich and his long involvement with this project. And we pray for him and the other trustees as they discern the way forward and way ahead for the charity in the coming months and years. Lord, in your mercy. This season of Lent leading up to Easter is a great opportunity for sharing in schools around Derbyshire through MAST. <clears throat> and we thank you for the many openings which Hannah Wills and her colleague Chloe have in many of the village schools in northern Derbyshire. And pray that the children in these villages will hear stories about you and have their hearts and minds open to understand more about what it means to follow you and just how much you love them. And as Ramadan starts for the next few days, we remember the millions of Muslims around the world who will be taking their religious practices so much more seriously in the coming months. Lord, we're humbled by their faithfulness in regular fasting and prayer, and <clears throat> um, outstanded by the dedication that they follow. Lord, we pray for those amongst them who really are seeking to know the truth. And we thank you for so many Muslims who have come to know you through dreams and we pray that again during this month of serious prayer that you will give more dreams to those who are spiritually hungry and searching for answers. And we think too of the few thousand Muslims actually living here in Derby. And for those of us who have contact with them at work or in different um, neighbours or wherever we meet them. <clears throat> and we pray that you'd help us to be ready to initiate conversations, ask them questions and be ready to share about our love of you. And then finally, we pray for the welcome evening tomorrow night here for a meeting place uh, here at church with international students. And we ask, Lord God, that you overrule with all the practicalities of making this happen, and that everyone who comes will enjoy coming, and a good number will want to come back and be faithful attenders. We thank you for the community that has developed in the last months and for the students coming so regularly. And pray, Lord God, that you'd guide us in the future of how we can introduce many of them to you and how much you love them. So, Lord, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you so much. Um, could I ask somebody just at the back um, to run to the children's groups just to make sure that they know that we are running about 10 minutes late. If, if somebody wouldn't mind doing that, that would be really, thank you, Ruth, that's great. Um, okay, wonderful. And now we'll move on to our um, Bible readings. 
Thank you. The first reading is Exodus chapter 18. Now Jethro, the priest of Midian and father-in-law of Moses, heard of everything God had done for Moses and for his people Israel and how the Lord had brought Israel out of Egypt. After Moses had sent away his wife Zipporah, his father-in-law Jethro received her and her two sons. One son was named Gershom, for Moses said, I have become an alien in a foreign land. And the other was named Eleazar, for he said, My father's God was my helper. He saved me from the sword of Pharaoh. Jethro, Moses' father-in-law, together with Moses' sons and wife, came to him in the desert, where he had camped near the mountain of God. Jethro had sent word to him, I, your father-in-law Jethro, am coming to you with your wife and her two sons. So Moses went out to meet his father-in-law and bowed down and kissed him. They greeted each other and then went into the tent. Moses told his father-in-law about everything the Lord had done to Pharaoh and the Egyptians for Israel's sake and about all the hardships they had met along the way and how the Lord had saved them. Jethro was delighted to hear about all the good things the Lord had done for Israel in rescuing them from the hand of the Egyptians. He said, Praise be to the Lord who rescued you from the hand of the Egyptians and of Pharaoh and who rescued the people from the hand of the Egyptians. Now I know that the Lord is greater than all other gods, for he did this to those who had treated Israel arrogantly. Then Jethro, Moses' father-in-law, brought a burnt offering and other sacrifices to God. And Aaron came with all the elders of Israel to eat bread with Moses' father-in-law in the presence of God. The next day, Moses took his seat to serve as judge for the people, and they stood around him from morning till evening. When his father-in-law saw all that Moses was doing for the people, he said, What is this you are doing for the people? Why do you sit alone as judge while all these people stand round you from morning till evening? Moses answered him, Because the people come to me to seek God's will. Whenever they have a dispute, it is brought to me, and I decide between the parties and inform them of God's decrees and laws. Moses' father-in-law replied, What you're doing is not good. You and these people who come to you will only wear yourselves out. The work is too heavy for you. You cannot handle it alone. Listen now to me, and I will give you some advice, and may God be with you. You must be the people's representative before God and bring their disputes to him. Teach them the decrees and laws and show them the way to live and the duties they are to perform. But select capable men from all the people, men who fear God, trustworthy men who hate dishonest gain, and appoint them as officials over thousands, hundreds, fifties, and tens. Have them serve as judges for the people at all times, but have them bring every difficult case to you. The simple cases, they can decide themselves. That will make your load lighter, because they will share it with you. If you do this, and God so commands, you will be able to stand the strain, and all these people will go home satisfied. Moses listened to his father-in-law and did everything he said. He chose capable men from all Israel and made them leaders of the people, officials over thousands, hundreds, fifties, and tens. They served as judges for the people at all times. The difficult cases they brought to Moses, but the simple ones they decided themselves. Then Moses sent his father-in-law on his way, and Jethro returned to his own country. Our second reading is taken from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 4, verses 5 to 7. Then the devil took him to the holy city, and had him stand on the highest point of the temple. If you are the son of God, he said, throw yourself down, for it is written, he will command his angels concerning you, and they will lift you up in their hands, so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. Jesus answered him, it is also written, do not put the Lord your God to the test. 
This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Just to give you an idea of how far behind the actual planned schedule we are, I should have finished my sermon two minutes ago. So um, we will be, the notice for parents to go and collect their children will be coming up, but probably not until about 11.15 on the screen. Um, So that was more of an instruction for the back than for anybody there, but let's pray. Father God, we thank you for this time to meet with you this morning. We thank you for the opportunity to bring you our burdens to bring you our sorrows, to talk with you in our places of wilderness when we are there. We give you thanks that you always meet with us. We pray that even in those times of trial we would come to know you better, that we would not attempt to put you to the test, but would instead learn to rest in your love and to seek your growth and direction from there. Fill our hearts with your Holy Spirit this morning, Lord, and guide my words this day. Amen. So last week, Mina spoke about the provision of God in the wilderness and how it is in the places where we need God's help that we actually find more opportunity to grow and step forward into who God is calling us to be um, than if we always choose to stay in the places where we are comfortable and find easy. Um, I believe she used the phrase, the proximal zone of development. Is that right? Yes. I've since learned that's nothing to do with Star Trek. Um, but yeah. but um, And this week we're looking at stepping up in the place of wilderness. Because when we know and rely on the provision of God, when we are drawn deeper into that relationship, that conversation, then a question we have to ask is, What are you calling me to do, Lord? Because we each have a calling. We each have gifts, talents, abilities that God wants to use. It's much easier to feel safe testing these out when everything is going swimmingly, when life is blue skies and comfortable. But the story of the Bible is that God seems more often than not to ask people to step out and to be bold in faith when things are actually looking quite difficult. When we find ourselves in the places of wilderness, God's call is not to hunker down, heads in the sand, just keep plodding on in the same way as before and hope that we stumble through in one piece. No, God asks us to look up, to see the new direction, to see where he is calling us to go and to be bold enough in our faith to follow where he is leading us. Moses, in our passage today, was leading as best he could. He wasn't really doing anything wrong or sinful. He was the leader of a nation that didn't have a home. He was the one with a mission from God. He was the one who had convinced them all to follow him out of Egypt. He was the one who had convinced them to cross the Red Sea by walking through it. He had been the one to convince them to rely on the provision of God. He was the one everyone turned to and relied on for all the decisions. And so he just kept on trying to keep everyone together, being the leader he thought he needed to be in order to keep the people together as one. When we find ourselves in places of wilderness, we can find ourselves going into survival mode, of trying to do what we have always done, just keeping the show on the road, but often doing it in a much more difficult way. Moses was the sole leader of an entire people. Yes, he had his brother and his sister to help him, but everyone still turned to him for the final decision on things. So he tried to be the sole leader out in the wilderness because he thought that was the only way. The people kept turning to him. He was the only one they could see in all of this following of God into the wilderness, so he was the one they could physically turn to. The people also let Moses be the sole leader because they were also in survival mode and sticking to the roles that they knew. They had spent generations in slavery in Egypt. They weren't used to leading. They were slaves. They did as they were told. 
Now they were in the wilderness, scared, lost. And so they did what they had always done. They turned for someone else to make the decisions. But this was holding the people back from who God was calling them to be. Everyone, including Moses, needed to step up in different ways of being the people of God. Now that they were in the place of wilderness, as they prepared for life as the people of God beyond that place, they needed to learn how things had to be different. Stepping up doesn't always mean picking up something new. Sometimes it's letting go. Moses needed to step up as the leader by being prepared to let go of some of the things he was currently doing. He had been the decision maker for the Israelites. He was the top dog, the go-to guy. Every question, every dispute, every decision, big or small. Now that worked initially when the only decisions were, do we cross this sea? Do we give up? Where is the food and water coming from? Which direction do we go in? But this was an entire people on the move in the place of wilderness. And questions were becoming far more numerous from the big ones to the tiny disputes. And Moses had to change how he led if the people were actually going to go anywhere and grow. He had to let go so that that he could actually continue the task that God was calling him to. In order for him to let go properly... Others had to be prepared to step up by picking up some of those roles as well. The things that Moses was putting down still needed doing. Others had to pick them up. And so the people of God had to be willing to hear the call that God was giving them to step up and change how things were being done in order for them to grow and thrive. If Moses had simply let go of things and no one had picked them up, the people might have fallen apart. Moses might have been dragged backwards in his calling in order just to keep them afloat. They all had a call. Moses, the people he appointed, and the rest of the people as well in order to work well with the new systems that were in place. If everyone hadn't stepped up, would the new system have worked? Would the Israelites have been as successful in the wilderness as they then were? Would it have taken even longer to get out of the wilderness? Now, we are a church that tries to encourage each of us to continually step up in different ways. And we do that in good times, and we've done that in times of wilderness. Obviously, it's easier and more fun to step up in good times when everything's going well. And we all feel we have loads of capacity and time and resources to step up with. But as we know and we've talked about today, those aren't the only times that God asks us to step up. As a church, we have many ministries on Sunday mornings and during the week where people volunteer their time and their gifts to ensure we keep reaching the people God wants us to and to keep fulfilling the vision that he has given us. Whether that's teaching the younger members of our church family or serving the older members of our community, reaching the international students who've left home to come here or those who have nowhere to call home. Practically keeping a roof over our heads and the lights on or faithfully praying for our church family and the wider world. There are so many ways as a church family that you all step up and help us to fulfill our calling as the people of God in this place. Four years ago, during the pandemic, in what felt like a particular time of wilderness for almost all of us, I imagine, in one way or another, many of you stepped up in remarkable ways helping us to get church services online as quickly as possible, and then helping to rapidly improve the quality and reach of those services so that we could stay connected to each other as a church family. Agreeing to help transform this space into a building that became a storage facility helping to get food to people who needed it most during that time. Simply stepping up and being there for each other during this time continuing to meet as a church family however we could and supporting each other as best we could in the wilderness that we found ourselves in. And more recently, it's been great to have new people stepping up into new roles, our new eco-group helping us to look at ways we can support each other and our church to be better for our planet, our additional needs group that's been improving things for all of our church family, our new youth worker, Jonathan, 
new members of our youth team, our service leading team, our intercessors, our Bible readers, our hospitality team members, meal train organizers, safeguarding team, worship team leaders. I could go on. It is wonderful to be part of a church where people continue to step up into new roles and responsibilities. We are incredibly grateful to be part of a church where that happens. Because we are all called to step up, not just in times of wilderness, but when those times of testing come, we particularly have to listen to God and ask where it is we might be being asked to step up and change what we are doing. And so we have some questions to ask for ourselves collectively and for each of us individually. What might you being asked to put down? It is something we have to ask ourselves regularly. Just this month, I felt it was time to stop board game church. Not because it was a bad thing, but it just wasn't the right thing to be doing right now. Maybe in the future, it might be the right thing to start up again. But right now, it is something that God was asking me to put down and not for somebody else to actually pick it up immediately either. Maybe it's something we've been doing the same way as a church for a long time. But maybe God is asking you or us to lay that down now and go in a different direction. Maybe someone else is being called to pick it up straight away. Or maybe it's something that will be picked up again later on. What is God calling you to pick up? You might have been a Christian for 50 years or 50 minutes, but God has placed a call on your life. And that call continues for the whole of your life. God doesn't stop asking us to get involved. I can look now to our retired clergy sitting a few rows back um, from the front of church, and God doesn't ask us to stop getting involved, does he, Adrian? No. He doesn't ask us to stop being light and salt in the world. What he does do is change how he asks us to do that, depending on where we are, who we are, who we are surrounded by, and what circumstances we find ourselves in. Maybe it's to get practically involved in a new way. We are looking to hire a new facilities manager, after all. And if anyone particularly feels that call from God, you know, if you want to give anyone a nudge just about now, I'd really be okay with that. Maybe it's to join a new team here at church, or to stand for PCC at the APCM next month. Maybe it's to preach or to lead. It might be to help in children's groups or a midweek ministry. Maybe it's just to be a faithful person of prayer for our church and community. So those are the questions. As a whole church, how are we being asked to step up? What do we need to lay down? What do we need to take up? What are we being called to change? How are we going to do that as a church? How is God calling us to do that as individuals? We're going to stand and we're going to worship together now. And as we worship, take that time to ask those questions of God, to really connect with him and say, what is it you are asking of me? What is it you are asking of us? What is the direction you are calling us to go in? And we know we cannot do it in our own strength, but only with your provision, Lord. Let's stand and let's worship together. Let's stand and let's worship together now. sing the other song <laughs> slightly changing things around thank you uh, no, that one either. 
I don't want to get there At the end of it all Looking behind me To see there was so much more Take this pocket full of faith It is all I have today I'm giving it all I'm giving it all Let's sing that again. I don't want to get there At the end of it all Looking behind me To see there was so much more Take this pocket full of faith it is all I have today I'm giving it all I'm giving it all You will always have my heart And every day I trust you Lord. Oh God Take this pocket full it is all I have today. I'm giving it all. I'm giving it all. Leaving the safety here at the shore, beyond the horizon. I see there is so much more Take this pocket full of faith It is all I have today I'm giving it all I'm giving it all You will always have my heart and
It's time for Church Family News. Uh, one, well, a few important announcements. The first one of which is that the electoral roll is back up on the notice board in the foyer. Um, and there are electoral forms available, I believe. Yes, good. Um, at the back of church. If you want to join our electoral roll, if you're not on our electoral roll, why are you not on our electoral roll? It's amazing. Come on! <laughs> For those who don't know what the electoral roll is, the electoral roll is basically our official record of those who consider themselves to be a part of our church family. So it is really important um, because it gives, it gives us a sense of who considers this to be their church home. Now, there's no obligation from being on the electoral roll to actually turn up to anything. So just because you're on the electoral roll, you don't have to come to the APCM. You don't have to stand for PCC. But being on the electoral roll does mean you can vote at the APCM for who is on our, our, our PCC um, and on all the important decisions we then have to take in the APCM. So if being on the electoral roll is important, it is a good thing to be a part of. Just because you're on the electoral roll, is not, we're not going to be immediately badgering you to stand for PCC. I might do that anyway and just try and convince you to stand for it next year if you're not on the electoral roll already. So you don't escape being badgered, so sign up for the electoral roll. Um, if you would like to join, you're not sure how, please speak to myself, Alex, Faye, Mina next week when she's here. If for some you know, strange reason it's on here, you'd like to come off the electoral roll, we can have that conversation as well, but that'll be a longer one. 
I'm kidding. Okay, um, Good Friday, not Good Friday, Easter Saturday. Easter Saturday is hot cross buns and craft. Um, we would like some helpers for coffee, tea, hot cross bun making and craft. Um, Donna, I'm sure I've seen you this morning. Is Donna here? She's where, sir? Oh, packing up the kids' groups. Um, so Donna is around um, this morning. Um, please speak to her if you're available to help with Easter Saturday. Um, it's going to be a lot of fun, um, and that is 9 till 1 on Easter Saturday. Um, so please speak to Donna if you're available to help with that. Um, this afternoon is 3.33 Church at St Paul's, um, so do come along for that. Um, it's a lot of fun. It's our all-age service twice a month. Um, and we're learning all about Moses and the different sorts of mothers that Moses had in his story, um, as well as, you know, we'll be making biscuits and stuff like that to eat as well, um, and sharing in stories and prayer and song. Um, so do come along for that at 3.30 this afternoon. And then finally, um, this Friday, we have Downcast Souls Expectant Hearts, um, which is a resound worship conference that Kelly um, has been organizing. It should be absolutely fantastic. It's going to be a great opportunity to come together to worship, to hear some new worship songs that have been worked on as well. Um, a great opportunity to come together as a community group, as a church family, um, however you want to come. Um, do speak to Kelly um, at the end of the service if you would like tickets. Um, there are also links on our Facebook page in the Church Family News email. Um, have we got a poster up at all with a, with a link on? Not, no, that's fine. No, um, but speak to Kelly if you can't get through on the email or the Facebook page, and Kelly would be delighted to give you a ticket. Tickets are £8.50, and that is this Friday. Doors open at 7 o'clock, starting about 7.30. Starting at 7.30. Um, it should be a fantastic evening of worship and praise together. Um, so it will be great to be there. Um, I think those are all the notices unless anybody waves frantically at me now. Adrian, Adrian has one, yes. It's not down in my list, babe. come on. You were right, we emailed us about a notice. Yes, they won't let me on the electoral roll, so count your blessings. <laughs> yeah, many years ago now, the Thorpe family moved to Sunderland and not long after we moved there, we had a trip to Paris. And on the way back, we flew in to Newcastle Airport, but we flew in over the city of Sunderland at about 4,000 feet. And you got a completely different perspective on the city that we lived in from that height. It seems to me that often we look at Scripture at a kind of ground level and we make the big picture, the big perspective, we all, you know, we, we read tiny bits in church. And so we miss out on what might be something bigger that God is trying to do and say to us. So, I'm thinking about, and I've been thinking about doing this for a couple of years, but now seems the right time, James, um, about starting what I call a theological reflection group, but my wife tells me I can't use that phrase because that sounds dull and boring. <laughs> Well, if thinking about God to you is dull and boring, don't come. If thinking about God excites you, this is something for you. Big questions, like some of those on the board. And there may be others that you want to think about. What we're going to do is we're going to meet on Wednesday, April the 10th. And uh, I'm going to give you some suggested work to do in preparation. So there'll be at least an hour's work to do. If you can't face that, don't come. But if you can, then again, this is for you. And um, on that occasion, we'll decide how we want to proceed. If we want to proceed once a month, a group of a batch of four, five, or six meetings, occasionally, whatever. But I'm looking forward to it, and I know that some others are too. Thanks, James. Thank you, Adrian. Yes, if that is something that piques your interest, please do speak to Adrian over coffee today. Um, he'd love to have a further conversation about that. Um, yes, yes, that is a loophole, isn't it, Adrian? That if, you, if you're ordained, you can no longer be on the electoral roll. It's, it's, I, I think it's twofold. One, it's to stop retired clergy leading a coup against the ordained vicars in their churches. And two, I think if you're terrified of being on the electoral roll, maybe God's put it on your heart that you're supposed to be ordained. So, 
If you're not on the electoral roll and you're really hesitant about it, maybe I need to have a conversation with you about vocation. In a moment, we're going to stand and we're going to have our final song of worship together, during which our offering will be taken up. Um, so if your community group is on the offering this morning, um, please do go to the back and help with that. And also at the back of church, I'm going to be stood next to three buckets full of daffodils. Um, if there is a mum or a mother figure in your life that you would like to gift a bunch of daffodils to, please come and collect one. Or if there is a mum in your life that you would like to be thankful for or to remember somebody who was in your life, um, please do come and collect a bunch of daffodils to take away as well. Um, but we're going to stand and we're going to sing our final song of worship together now.
Lord, thank you for all of our guardians, our mums and our dads and those who give us lots of care and love. Um, and I will get told off if I don't do this. Happy Mother's Day, Mum. Miss you, love you. <laughs> Sorry, just had to do that. Um, okay, so um, we now come together to say our prayer and blessing that we've been saying recently. So if we can have the words up on the screen. So together we pray. I pray that out of his glorious riches, he may strengthen you with the power through his spirit in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your heart through faith, and I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have power together with all the Lord's holy people to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ, and to know this love that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.